The Fly, Chapter 5 The Fly as a Wholesome Air Preserver March 17, 1842 On a hot summer's day, especially on a humid afternoon, you will often have experienced how sleep tries to overpower a tired person. A young person can fight it off by different means, such as physical exercise or some interesting activity to keep him awake. It is another matter with a much older person whose limbs have been through a lot and have become stiffer, more painful and a lot sleepier. On such a day, if the air around him lacks the vital life substance for his needs, then comes the above-mentioned sleepiness, and such a person may not be able to stay awake. For you to grasp the negative effects of such sleep, it is necessary to take a look at man's natural sleep first. Why does a person naturally get sleepy at night and not in the daytime? Indeed, the cause is quite natural, but since most people have not recognised the area of influence of the natural sphere, The cause of natural sleep is mostly unknown to them. Understand, when the light of the sun, as the positive polar part of natural life, no longer spends its rays on one or the other side of the earth, the polarity on earth keeps changing. Thus, as the sun sets for a region, that region immediately begins to change to a negative polarity. The negative pole of life corresponds to that of the earth. As this negative polarity actually resists the natural life activity, correspondingly in man, it consumes more and more of the positive electricity in man. Thus man loses more and more of his outer activity, wherein the softer, movable parts For example, the eyelids. Notice the loss first, and can no longer hold themselves upright, and soon thereafter all other body parts follow into the same weakened state. This then is man's natural nighttime sleep. Now, the only question that remains is how the natural sleep differs from the aforementioned daytime sleep. Once this is understood, we will have the entire subject. Daytime sleep is the very opposite of the natural sleep, since it is not caused by the decrease of positive electricity, but by oversaturation with it. A less active body is no longer able to use up, or rather exchange, the ingested positive electricity into the proper amount of negative electricity. When the positive begins to outweigh the negative, the negative begins to decrease in the same proportion. The result of this is easy to understand. As two men of unequal strength wrestle with one another, the weaker the weak one becomes, the more power the strong one has over him. But once the weak one is fully overcome, the strength of the strong one has come to an end, because there is nothing more to resist his superior strength. Every power is as good as no power at all if there is no resistance, nothing to support or utilise the power. See, my darlings, So it is with a person when he is overcome by sleep in the daytime. And, mark well, on a humid summer's day saturated with electricity. But what have our flies to do with all this? Notice 
here will be revealed another important and greatly useful and one of the two already promised secondary purposes of this little animal. These little animals were and buzz and patter diligently over such a daytime sleeper, and through their feet and their various hairs and bristles suck up the excess positive electricity, so that, regardless of the superabundance, the positive electricity does not suppress the sleeper's negative electricity, thus preserving the natural life of the sleeper. If there were no such insignificant regulators of this natural life substance, diligently maintaining the balance as much as possible, there would be an end to the natural life the moment the positive electricity completely overcame the negative electricity. See the previous chapter 4.8. The sleeper drives these pesky creatures away as long as he can. But that does not mean anything. For as long as he can still ward them off, there is no danger to his life. Once sleep has him totally paralysed, these bothersome creatures have a free hand and they make sure nothing endangers the life of the sleeper. When, in time, and sometimes only through the efforts of these little pests, the negative polarity becomes more and more balanced, the sleeper awakens and chases these little lifesavers from his body. And this is all right since, once he is awake, the danger of losing his natural life is as good as over. Now, my dear little ones, how do you like the secondary duty of this little animal? You must admit that all this is arranged exceedingly well and wisely by me, to which I add, eventually, when you have a spiritual overview of the total purpose of this animal, only then will you be able to really wonder and say, How great and good you are, O Holy Father! when you have already placed in such a seemingly insignificant creation such unfathomably wise purposes. Who can praise and extol you enough even for one fly? Where will we ever get the words, thoughts and feelings to appreciate and feel and most gratefully acknowledge your majesty, your endless love and wisdom in one of your more complete that is, perfect creations. Yes, my dear little children, there are more things considerably greater in a sun than in a fly. But whoever wants to recognize me must first go to the small school and begin to recognize the dear father there. Once he has persevered there, later he will surely persevere in the larger one and will rejoice beyond measure when he recognises there that the same loving Holy Father who himself guides and leads sons through immeasurable paths and writes laws of eternal love for the most majestic, the most mighty and the most complete spirits. See, my dear ones, you will eventually fully recognize all this. And so let us return again to the narrow and, until now, totally unrecognized sphere of activity, which means, let us return again to our little fly and observe one more of its beneficial secondary purposes.